Welcome back to the show where we bring you all the Dolphins news you need to know about. Later in the show, we break down a specific group in free agency. This week, we're going to be doing offensive alignment. This is the last episode on free agency. We have covered every single position. So if you want Dolphins free agency previewed, from tight ends to the quarterbacks to receivers to corners to safeties to linebackers, inside linebackers, offensive and defensive linemen, then go check out the channel because we break it all down. Uh, you know, just I think the first one we did was uh, tight ends. So you know, just count all the positions and um, go over the last few weeks, and you have all of the episodes there. Uh, if you want to preview free agency, actually, you might mush all of them together. And just upload the video, just previewing Dolphins free agency uh, a few days before the, the draft or the, the free agency opens. Uh, might be a good idea. So after we break down the positional group, we answer fans' questions for the last segment of the show. So let's start with obviously the news you need to know about. And this first news story, we've only got like a, like three news stories, um, but they're interesting news stories. Uh, this first news story comes from Pro Football Rumors. Um. With the Dolphins holding the fifth overall pick, the team may have to make a trade if they want to select to attack about Loa. General Manager Chris Greer acknowledges that a deal is possible, but he cautioned that trade talks have not yet took place. He says, this is Chris Greer, this is a quote from Chris Greer, he says, quote, Not yet, because we're so early. No team has really met many of these guys yet, so I think until everyone goes through that process and we've talked about it, that's when we'll make deter- uh, determinations on what's best for our franchise. So that makes sense, obviously. Um, you know, nobody really knows what they want to do yet or it has like a great idea on, oh, I like this guy, I like this guy. Uh, so yeah, it's a little too early for that. Plus, a lot of front offices are, I mean, free agency is about to start. So I, I, I would assume everybody's, you know, a lot of the manpower right now, especially for a GM, is making calls uh, regarding free agency. And I know you can't do that because of tampering. But people do it anyway, so... Um, it's going to be pretty dope for agency. So yeah, I mean, the th- yeah, we're, we're basically yeah, we'll trade if we you know, we'll trade up if we have to. Which it it is interesting that he he answered it that way because it is it is a little bit of a tip of the cap. You know, we've had some smoke screens here and there about oh Justin Herbert, Jordan Love, um, some of the other quarterbacks that are clearly not better in my opinion at least than the guys that are ahead of them, uh, Joe Burrow and. Uh, to a Tagovailoa, my top four off or five, I would say, quarterback prospects are, I would say, a lot different at this point than other people's. I think there's a big drop off from the top two. Um, I think the first two are really, really good, and I think they're both going to be franchise quarterbacks. And I think after that, there's a lot of question marks with a lot of these guys. When you think about Justin Herbert, you know, playmaking ability instincts are huge questions for me i know he's six foot six and he ran a four seven forty at the combine so he's a good athlete he's got a strong arm but when you watch him play in college you know there you know he made some throws but he really other than the bowl game his last game uh, at oregon you really didn't see him create offense all that much and make special plays um and you know that's a big deal for me and again i said like i said i think instincts um, and I can't remember the other thing I brought up. I'm sorry, guys. Um, are the two things that, for me, um, I really don't pop off the screen when I look at Justin Herbert. And, uh, you know, so he's a, he's a lot lower on my list than some of these other guys. I think his potential is interesting. The thing, you know, when you look at Josh Allen, this is, a, I guess, a, a decent comparison. People compare him to, like, Ben Roethlisberger or Josh Allen both of those guys, though, throughout their career, you could see, okay, these guys make offense for their team. These guys can extend a play. These guys um, can make something out of nothing. And like I said, you just really didn't see that a lot with Justin Herbert, despite his physical gifts. Listen, Joe Flacco was 6'6", couldn't run like Justin Herbert, but had a strong arm. You know, Ryan Tannehill... You know, he's elevated his career to a, a greater degree, but it took him a while to get there. And Tannehill has always struggled with his football instincts. Uh, he's never really been a playmaker. He's still really not that. He's way better at it than he used to be. But he he never really was able to utilize his 
physical gifts. I think the best we ever saw of Tannehill in terms of creating offense, and this is not even a joke, he wasn't that great of a quarterback yet, but he was a good player. He was a good player, I would say. Uh, was 2012 and 2013. Now, 2013 was statistically probably his worst season, but both of those seasons, he did a really good job of making plays with his legs and extending plays. Um, you know, he had that great run at Pittsburgh in the snow on the road in December. That was a huge road win for that team. I think about 2012 against the Seahawks and, you know, really when the Legion of Boo started getting going, he had a game-winning drive against them at home in Miami. You know, and then after that, you really didn't see it. So I think he had he gives me those vibes of Tannehill, Justin Herbert does. Um, so I think if the Dolphins were to make the... I, I think you cannot pick... Just you can't settle for Justin Herbert or Jordan Love, in my opinion, um, because I think there are better players at that point. Then I'm okay with not taking quarterback at that point, uh, because I don't want to waste a pick. Um, you know, both of those guys. You know, Jordan Love's a great development, but we don't know. I mean, you never know with these players, and it's just way too many question marks for me. And, uh, yeah, I would rather go with the sure thing. So if the Dolphins have to trade up, I'm all for it. Now, I'm not all for giving up two first-round picks. You know, we're at five. We're not at ten. We're not at 13. We're not at 15. It shouldn't take that. I mean, depending on how heated the negotiations get, the thing about that goes against the Dolphins is there are other people that want those players. And uh, that's the tough thing. That's when the price probably could go up. Uh, because of the demand of the players. But we'll see what happens. It's going to be very interesting. Um, once we get to three and four, it's going to be very stressful. Um, even at one, I, th- I think I still think there's a chance the Bengals take Justin Herbert. I really do. Um, all right, so let's move on to the next new story. Uh, this comes from Pro Football Rumors. Dolphins are high on quarterback Jordan Love. The Dolphins... Um, infatuation with Love is only intensifying as Adam Beasley of the Miami Herald writes. However, Love's stock appears to be rising around the league, and the belief is that Miami will not be able to wait until 18 to pick him. The organization thinks that a quarterback needy team like the Chargers or Panthers are gearing up to jump uh, the Dolphins at number 5 uh, to select Tua Tagovailoa, which would leave the Finns with their choices of Herbert or Love. In that case, it's looking more like a toss-up between the two passers, though Herbert was very impressive during his throwing drills at the Combine, while Love had more of mixed performances. The Dolphins, with a number of holes to fill, do not want to part with their own hard-earned draft capital. See, this is where, I don't know what's a smokescreen, what's a not. I said uh, last week's episode, or maybe it was two weeks ago, that usually when stuff leaks from the Dolphins, it's true. We've had so many leaks about what the Dolphins are going to do. Like, oh, they love Justin Herbert. They love Jordan Love. They're going to trade up to get Joe Burrow. I mean, I literally heard, I think it was an ESPN analyst say, I know for a fact, and he was he was talking about what he learned from the Combine, and he was he's a reporter, obviously. He said, I know for a fact the Dolphins are really going to try to get Joe Burrow. We've heard that. We've heard the Dolphins are trying to get Tom Brady. Still, even after what Stephen Ross said, people still think the Dolphins are going to get Tom Brady. Um... So all of these things are speculation and leaks, in my opinion. We've heard the same thing about Tua, I mean, for years now, really. Um, So who knows what's true? Who knows what's, you know, whatever. I like Jordan Love a lot. I think he would be my third quarterback if I had to rank him. If I had to rank the quarterbacks, I would say it would be Burrow 1, Tua 2, Jordan Love 3. I'm going to say... Jalen Hurts, four, and Justin Herbert, five. And that's no disrespect to Justin Herbert. Uh, but I, I like... The only thing that disappointed me about Jalen Hurts, and especially at his senior bowl, was his mobility. I really thought his athleticism would shine in that game. And it, it really was a little concerning. I don't know if he was... I don't know what was going on there, but it just it really didn't show up. It really, you know... But, I you know, a lot of people compare him to Dak Prescott. Um, I, I see a lot of that in Jalen Hurts, so I'm, I'm gonna, and the reason I have Jordan Love so high is because his ceiling is pretty crazy, um, with the, the things that he can do, or could do down the line, but those would be, I mean, Justin Herbert's good too, um, to be honest with you, all three of Jalen Hurts, Justin Herbert, and Jordan Love are all in the same bin at that point, you know, they're pretty much the same in terms of, oh, well, they have this issue, this issue, and that issue, but they have this positive, this positive, and this positive, they just have a lot of question marks unlike the other two that, to me, 
Tua has the question mark of health, but I, I don't think that's going to be a problem. And uh, Jordan or Joe Burrow doesn't have any question marks. So, so yeah, who knows? Who knows if this is a uh, true or not? Who really? At the end of the day, we who cares? Because hey, it's all speculation. Again, all of these report con reports contradict themselves. Um, you know, it's like. Who knows what they're going to do, to be honest. I mean, I, I think we have an idea of what they're going to do. I think we have all of a hope of what they're going to do. Or like, we want to, I hope they do this. Um, I hope they don't mess it up. Um, it, you know, and we won't really know until the season starts, but we kind of do know uh, in a way. It's like, ah, this guy was really good. I mean, we've passed on some good players uh, in the past. So, you know, it is what it is. These leaks are going to keep happening. The speculation is going to keep happening. Uh, it's because this team has so much assets and... Um, that it's, it's going to, this team is going to be attached to every big name because of that. Um, it's just a bunch of hearsay at this point. This next news story comes from Pro Football Rivers. This is probably the most interesting one out of the, all of them. Uh, Dolphins seeking an upgrade at center. Like the Jets, the Dolphins could have a retold offensive front. They are looking around for centers to replace Daniel Kilgore. Kilgore, Kilgore has started 17 games since signing with the Dolphins in 2018, releasing him in the final year of his contract would save the Dolphins four million dollars. Yeah, you could pretty much, you could pretty much lock that down. Um, the Dolph, this has actually been a thing for a while that the Dolphin, even during the season, or a little, a little bit after the season was over. I remember. Here, reading an article about how the Dolphins really, really wanted to upgrade at center, uh, and the reason is, I think it, not only is Daniel Kilgore an average player, he's he doesn't he's cannot stay healthy. So if you mix those two together, together, you're not on the field a lot, and you're not the greatest player in the world, then you're pretty much expendable. Oh, and you save us four million dollars in cap space. Oh, okay. You know, at that point, you're like, you know. It's probably time to go. I know his leadership was a huge, huge, huge plus for that locker room. You know, you heard that a lot from the players. But you know, he did. He barely played. You know, and when he does play, he's okay. He's not. You know, he's not bad. He's not a bad player. Um, but he's not. You know, Travis Frederick or like someone like someone you can say, oh, he barely is on the field. But when he is on the field, he's you know he makes a difference. He's not that kind of player. You can't overlook. The missed games, because it it's like ah the trade off isn't all that great. So, uh, when you look at the free agency market for centers, and we're gonna do offensive linemen right after this, it's not good. There's a lot of good players. They're not they're not even I should I don't even know why I just said that. There's not a, there's not a lot of good players is what I meant to say. Um, there's a lot of backups. There's a lot of older players. In the center market especially is very, very shallow. Like there's maybe one name out there that like there's two names that are that have been really good players in the past that aren't good players now. Like Ryan Khalil is a free agent. He just retired and came out of retirement. Um, you know, Ben Garland is a free agent. He's a, he's a good player, but you know he you know, I, I don't I don't know the center market isn't that. There's like two guys. That it's like, oh, those two guys are good. They're they're okay. You know, they're good. But there's there I, I there's two guys. You know what I mean? Uh, so the center market is very very. It's not. There's not a lot there. I, I would I, I would think the Dolphins would either address this in the draft. You know, you kind. I would rather my center be a veteran because of the responsibilities of a center, and really all offensive linemen. I I would rather have veterans than rookies. Um, and that's just my that's how I think about it, but uh, it is what it is. I just don't think the center market's that deep. So this is this news that the Dolphins are going to try to upgrade. It's like uh, I don't know how they're going to do that. I mean, maybe you get a healthier player than Daniel Kilgore, but I don't know about someone who's significantly better or even better to begin with. I think you're going to get a lot of the samey stuff, like ah, oh, this player is about the same as him. But if he's more healthy, then yeah. So yeah, I looked at the center market. None of them made my list, so that goes to show you. And we're an offensive lineman needy team. Um, like de this is probably number one on my list in terms of what the Dolphins. This the defensive line to me is tied. They need this so bad, 
and uh, there there are some there are some good players. I will say this this the free agency market for offensive linemen is a little bit overrated due to the franchise tag and some of these players being taken off the board already. So yeah, let's get into that right. Now. Let's preview the offensive linemen for the Dolphins in 2020. So I'm going to name some players that didn't make my list that are probably big names. Brandon Sheriff from the Washington Redskins. Or I don't think I'm saying his name wrong, but we're, we're not gonna we're not gonna uh, linger on that from too uh, you know that long. So yeah, Brandon. Uh, Sheriff did not make my list because he got franchise. He's gonna. He's rumored to get franchise tag. Brian Bulaga did make my list. Too injured. Jason Peters didn't my, make my list. He's thirty eight years old. He's almost forty, so I didn't put him on the list. Uh, Andrew Whitworth didn't make my list. Too old. Thirty eight years old. These are some of the names that you guys. The, these are the reasons I didn't put them on my list. Um, see me some other players here that might be big names to you guys. Um, Marshall Newhouse didn't make my list. You know, he's inconsistent as all. He's a backup player, too. Um, see if there's... Uh, make it, oh, Richie Incogno, if, Incogno. Richie Incognito didn't make my list uh, because he's 38 years old. So... Um, Andre Smith didn't make my list. Uh, he was, used to be a good player. He's not anymore. Donald Penn didn't make my list. He's too old. He's 38 years old. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. So the, John Jerry didn't make my list. He's 34. And he's in his later years, he's, he's not that good. Um, I think that pretty much covers... You know, if you're a contender and you need a tackle, then yeah, go out there and get Jason Peters. You know what I'm saying? Go out there and get... Andrew Whitworth. Those are really good players, but they're they're 38 years old. Now, this team is a young team that we're building here in Miami, and it's going to, you know, the, the ultimate goal is a Super Bowl. And um, so, yeah, it's, you know, it would, it would just be, you know, uh, but by the time, you know, we're in contention for a Super Bowl, this dude's going to be 40. So, you know, it's, it's, it's just not... That's not why they're not on my list. I think it's pretty self-explanatory. I, I really don't know why I had to sit there and... Um, uh, give you that little spiel there. But anyway, let's move on to the list. So again, the criteria is age. We just named a bunch of players that are way too old to make this list. Age, consistency, and durability. So for offensive linemen, that's what it comes down to. Age, consistency, and durability. If you don't have those, you're not on my list. Uh, so there are two players on this list that kind of go against that a little bit, but they're really good players. Um, uh, let's see here. Let's start with a with a lower name, Quentin Spain for the Buffalo Bills. He's going to be a free agent. He's six four, three hundred and thirty pounds. Uh, he was drafted in twenty fifteen. He's I think twenty seven. Uh, or 28, 27 or 28. His PFF grade, because you can't really quantify offensive linemen stats. So I, you know, I really don't, I don't go to PFF. I, I really just kind of go off the eye test. But Quinn Spain, we all know he's a good player. He was on a run first team and they were able to really push people uh, up front and he was a big part of that. So that's why he's on my list. Um, he played almost, he played well over a thousand snaps, which ranks 12th in the NFL. He allowed zero stacks at guard. His PFF grades a 55, which isn't that good, but hey, he's a good he's a good guard. You don't let up a sack, you're a good player, and he's a, he's a really really good run uh, blocker as well. He only had four penalties, so again, there you go. He's a good player. He's young. He's a good guard. He's a physical guard. He's a big dude. He's six four three thirty. He allowed zero sacks last this past season. He's durable. Played over a thousand snaps, and he doesn't get penalized. He's tied for 30th in the league among guards in, in terms of penalties. So he's a really good player. We all saw him play. Like I said, he was a part of that run-heavy Buffalo Bills offense, and uh, he was he felt right at home in there. And if you watch, and again, we've all we've seen, you know, let's just say we've you know we haven't done so well against Buffalo over the last two years, really the last five years. But um, he's he he was he's someone who stood out to me when we were watching those games. So that's why he's on this list. And this is something the Dolphins need. Quentin Spain brings what the Dolphins need. They need a physical presence in the interior of their offensive line. They need that, and they need durability, and they need consistency. To me, Quentin Spain brings that, and I like Quentin Spain 
a good amount. Um, so yeah, he definitely makes the list. The sixth player is someone we've already talked about a lot, but he makes the list anyway. We're going to talk about him right now. Joe Thune. He is tied, or he's not tied. He is second in the NFL on offensive snaps played. He only allowed one sack uh, the entire 2019 season. Um, he has a PFF grade of 77.4, which is green, so I'm assuming that's really good. Or good, at least. Not really good. He's 6'5", 308. He, had a, he ran a 4'940 at his combine. He's always been a really good athlete. He's always been one of the best guards in the league. He still is. And really what makes him still a top five, top three guard in the NFL is his durability. He doesn't get hurt if you look at his career. And he's a good player. So those combination of things are desperately needed. You know, Brian Flores is obviously familiar with this player. Uh, you know, he makes the list for all the same reasons that Quentin Spain made the list. Big dude, athletic, great pass, great in pass protection. Um, he's a, really he's an athlete, so you can you can pull him uh, and have some su- success there. But he brings that physical n- nature and, and and oh, just a really good player and, and talent to the interior of the offensive line that we haven't had in Miami for a long, long time. Joe Thune would be a, a perennial Pro Bowler. Like that's how good Joe Thune is. Like I don't think Quentin Sp- I think Quentin Spain is a good starter in this league. Joe Thune's a pro bowler, so he would be a big get for the Dolphins if they did get him. He's a special player, and he brings a lot to the... I mean, to be 6'5", 308, and around a 4'9", 40, he, you know you're a good at... I mean, that's that's you know really unheard of a lot a lot of the time. So I like Joe Thune a lot. He's And if you, again, just look at his career. He's always been, you know, uh, he's always been a good player. And you match that with his durability, his age, all of those things come together to make a really good player. The next player on my list of offensive linemen, uh, this he doesn't make me he does not meet one of my criteria, but he's a former first team All Pro, so that's why he made my list. And I've seen a lot of his games. It's Daryl Williams for the Carolina Panthers. Now he plays guard slash tackle. I think he made first team All Pro as a right tackle, if I'm not mistaken. So he's very versatile. Uh, he's three thirty, six foot six, physical as all get out. I mean, this dude is. A mauler. Okay, his offensive snaps played, this is where, you know, the issue is. You know, he had a broken leg. He's been very injury prone. He hasn't been that, um, that, um, uh, I don't know what the word I'm looking for, dependable. He hasn't been that dependable. Not only has he not been that dependable, but coming off of the leg injury, he wasn't the same. Uh, he wasn't as good as he used to be. And if you look at his sacks allowed, He's uh he allowed twelve sacks this past season, so not great. But I still feel like him coming off the injury, having an extra year to he- year to heal. There is something there, because uh, this man is he's a he was a former first team All Pro. He's under radar. I don't think he's gonna command a ton of money in free agency, so that's why I put him on my list. He's younger. Um, I like him a lot. Former fourth round pick. He's a f- uh, overall grade of fifty six. Not great. And the reason that this offensive line struggled at times is the quarterback play was very poor. Um, it was very poor. And uh, I feel like injury plus bad quarterback play equals not the greatest year in the world. But I still think Daryl Williams is talented. He would be very low on my list, but he would be an upgrade if he were to sign with the Dolphins. Plus, he's versatile. He can play tackle or guard. Um, so I like Daryl Williams, even though he would be like probably dead last on my list of uh, dream scenarios, but I, I will put him on the list because of the lack of talent throughout the offensive line, in my opinion. Now, keep in mind, the Dolphins still have Michael Dieter, who, who's an up-and-coming player, and Shao Calhoun, too, who could, who could still be someone who could either come off the bench or some maybe someday become a, a good player, but um, the offensive line is a huge issue, especially the tackle positions. So, Darrell Williams could bring uh, a great depth to this team because of his versatility. So that's why I put him on the list. He still adds talent to a room that isn't that talented. This next player that's on my list uh, is Jake uh, Conklin. Conklin. Uh, one of the best tackles of this past season. Didn't get to 1,000 snaps. And he's, he's always had that issue of durability. And that's the biggest, biggest knock against Jake. Uh, when you look at his, his sacks, he only allowed four at the left tackle position. He ranked 30th in penalties. His PFF grade is a 78.0. Jake, Jake is a perennial pro bowler. 
He's a great tackle, one of the best in the AFC, if not the best. He's definitely top three. Um, uh, was one of the, was a part of probably the most dominant offensive line down the stretch of the league year. Other than the 49ers, that offensive line for the Titans was old school, and they were, they mauled people, and they and they pushed one of the some of the best fronts in the AFC in the playoffs. So, and he was a big part of that. So, yeah, Jake is a very special player. I like Joe Thune. He's more than your average tackle or guard he's someone who can make a pro bowl second team third team first team all pro and could be your statue on the left or right side of the field for a long long time and this would be a huge gift for the dolphins not only are you getting someone that's a great player but you traded laramie Tunsil away for a first round pick and jake is a better all-around tackle than he is jake is a way better run blocker he's i would say him and laramie Jake's missed a little bit more time than Laramie, but Laramie's missed his fair share of, few, uh, of games as well. I think Jake is more all-around tackle. I think he's uh, a better tackle because of that. I don't. He's not necessarily a better pass pr- protector because I think Laramie was really good at that. Because Laramie did it at a high level at guard and tackle. Uh, I don't think he's as versatile as Laramie was. Uh, I don't think he's the athlete that Laramie is, uh, but he's still. I think he's a better player. And again, he's a special player. He's a pro bowler, and uh, that, that he would rank probably at the top. Uh, the only reason I, you, you have issues, especially with offensive linemen, man, durability is a big deal because tackles don't grow on trees. They're like quarterbacks. It's, it's, you know, pass rushers is too. Like they're very the, the, those positions are so valuable. Um, and if you don't have good depth there, if you don't have health there, it's really because there's not one team in the league I could say, oh, you have a great backup tackle. Like, that doesn't happen. So you really want your tackles to be able to uh, at least go f- 13, 14 games. Um, it, you know, that'd be an ideal situation, but that's the only knock against Jake. Because other than that, he's a, he's, a, he's a very good tackle and could be a... He's young, too. So uh, I think he was drafted in 2015. Uh, so he, he could, uh, 2015, 2016, somewhere around in there. So he could be, um, a, 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 you know, a Dolphin for a very long time and, and play at a high level. Uh, the sixth player uh, come, no, I don't know why I'm, like, I'm doing the news. The sixth player is Graham Glasgow from the Detroit Lions. He's a guard, was drafted in 2015, right? Yeah, drafted, excuse me, he was drafted in 2016. He was a third-round pick, 6'6", 310. A little bit, you know, in terms of 40 time, if you're interested. You're in a 540 flat. Uh, his, his PFF grade is a 74.1. He allowed zero sacks in 2019. He played 872 snaps, so he didn't get to 1,000 snaps. Penalties. He was only penalized three times. So he's had some injury issues, but he's a good player. This is an, another player that's an average, good starter in the NFL, and that's exactly what the Dolphins needed that position. The issue with him is, again, not the most healthy player in the world. I'd like to see him play a little bit more snaps than uh, 800, which is tied for 38th in the NFL. So that's not great. But good player nonetheless and would definitely be... Uh, a welcomed addition to the to, to the to the team. Um, this next player is a very very you know what we'll do him we'll do these two last because these two are really good. Uh, the this next player really has had a lot of health issues, but he's one of the best players at his position when healthy. Andrews Pete. Um, Andrews Pete. Has had dude, how many snaps did Andrews people? I know he got hurt. He played 500 snaps. He allowed three sacks and those snaps, three penalties. I like Andrews Pete. I think he's a, I think he's a good player. Um, he just has issues staying healthy. Um, and he's a free agent. I think he's coming off his rookie deal. He's 26 years old. Big dude, 6'7", 315. Um, uh. You know, maybe I overhyped him a little bit, but I, I I shouldn't say great. I'll say he's a good player. I still think he has potential, and when he is healthy, I think he can he is a, he can, can be a great player. Uh, but he was the last guy I, I, I like skipped over. I was like, oh, Andrews Pete's a free agent. I like Andrews Pete, and he bring again six seven at guard at the guard position, and he's a good player. And uh, PFF grade not that great. You know, again, a lot of these guys have health issues. Um, I think all off the linemen. 
there are very few in the league that are Iron Men that are made of steel. Let's just put it that way. Definitely overhyped Andrew Pete, but that's all good. Shouldn't have said he's. I guess he definitely probably wouldn't even make. He's not a top ten offensive lineman, but I don't know where he would rank in the guard if he's healthy. Um, but I don't know. But he. Uh, I think did we move on? No, no, no. Uh, again. It would be an upgrade, in my opinion. Especially, he's, you know, for a first-round pick. I know that is, I don't know why I say that, like, that means something. But, you know, he's a talented player. This next, this next player is Anthony Costanzo. Now, Anthony Costanzo has had a long, fruitful career. He's 6'7", 3'11". In terms of weight, he's not, he's, that's not how tall he is. Um, big, big tackle. And, and does everything really well. He allowed three sacks, which is 47th in the NFL. Uh, he played well over 1,000 snaps, which is ninth in the NFL. Two penalties. His PFF grade is the highest we've had here so far, which is an 81.3, um, which is pretty high. And He's always been a consistent player, always been able to stay relatively healthy throughout his career. Um, great pass protector, better run, run blocker, in my opinion. Physical dude, what a part of the big blue wall over there in Indianapolis, um, one of the best offensive lines in the league, would be a great addition to the team. If they somehow pulled off Jake and Anthony, I think that would be amazing. Um, you know, he's 32 years old, he's a little bit older, uh, but he can still, I still, you get five or six years, five years, I will say five years, I think you get five years of good tackle play from him. Um, so, yeah. This next player plays right tackle, so if you're a Tua fan, this matters. Damar Dotson. Damar Dotson was drafted in 2009, which is crazy. He's 34 years old, so one of the older players on this. Um, he allowed five sacks, which isn't the best. His PFF grade is 71.0. Uh, he had penalties 10, which is a kind of an issue, but played well over 1,000 snaps. Could bring a good, a great veteran presence. Talented player. He's been doing it for a long time. In terms of the tackles, I think he would rank third, but behind Jake and Anthony. Um, but he's still, I think he's still a good player and uh, could add a much needed talent boost at that position. So, if I had to rank the offensive linemen that are on my list, I would say, I would say, Anthony Costanzo is probably one. Jake is probably two. I would say three, Joe Thune. Four, Quentin Spain. And then rounding out the fifth spot, DeMar Dotson. I think that would, that would be my five best linemen for the Dolphins to get. I think I would move Joe Thune up a little bit and maybe move Jake down, to be honest with you. Because it's really rare that you find a player who is, is as durable as Joe and as good as Joe. And that, that is a, it's like a Bruce Matthews thing. It's like, those guys, I'm not saying he's as good as Bruce Matthews was. I'm saying that Bruce Matthews was always playing. He played for such a long time, and, and he was always consistent. And those are some of the qualities that I love, especially in an offensive lineman, because it's so hard to get depth at that position. So for those reasons, I would think, I would say Joe Thune's probably two. And I would put Jake three and Anthony Costanzo still is probably one because he brings those same qualities. You know, he had a very healthy season this past season. He's always been a good player, um, and he's been doing it since 2011. And you know, he's been through. He's been a part of some bad lines, some great lines, uh, and he's been able to st stick and, and have his job for for a very long time. Uh, and I think that all of those things are really good signs for me. And again, his play has been consistent. He's healthy. He's only 32 years old at tackle, which is fine. Um, and would be a huge, 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 huge boost to this team. I think the, we had Damari and Quentin Spain running out the top five. I think, again, Quentin Spain would be an upgrade at guard. Uh, same thing with Damar Dotson if he, you know, if somehow the Dolphins are left with. Because there's only, if you look at the list, those are the, really the only, to me, offensive linemen worth spending money on. They're younger. Than a lot of the other bigger names, and that's pretty much what it, they're more durable. And I think really it's the age thing. Like if you look at Jason Peters, you know, 
Andrew Whitworth, Richie Incognito, they're almost 40 years old. So if you're going to invest in someone to build a team, those guys, these guys to me are the best for that. Um, so th- that that's really, you know, if Jason Peters was on this list, obviously he would be way higher and same, or he would be on this list and he might have been, might be the best. Richie Incognito, the same thing. He might be the best guardian for agency, but he's, you're almost you're almost a middle-aged man man so you know it's tough to put those guys on this list so that's that's why they didn't make the list uh because those guys are still top of their game in my opinion so yeah that's it that's my list that's my off the lineman list if and if you guys have any other guys you would have added uh let me know down in the comment section below to me that's the best group um and hopefully the dolphins if they if they somehow got anthony and and, and jake I would be happiest with that because the guard position and people are going to freak the heck out. I, I think the Dolphins need to add a starter there. I think Michael Dieter in year two, I, I want to see what that looks like. And I know people are going to freak out about that, but I like Michael Dieter. I think he has a good, a good future in this league. The other guard position is still a little bit up for grabs in my opinion. I would, I would want to get someone there who's really good. And ideally you get two of them. I'm not against getting two guards. That's that that that's you know, that I'm not against that at all. But I feel like if I was the GM, I would prioritize a guard position and two tackle positions. Th- those would be the three positions I prioritize, and the two positions I go after first for sure is tackles. And I would try to get one of the you know, to hopefully both of them, uh, you know, get two of the big fish um, and, and those two players. And I wouldn't be surprised if Costanzo is franchise tagged either, because I don't think the Colts have any other uh, big free agent names. Um, for agency players out there so yeah um, so that is going to be it guy, or not, that's not going to be it for the show I don't know why I'm ending the, like, uh, ending the video we still have the fan Q&A but that is going to be it for free agency ladies and gentlemen we have previewed free agency if we had like an Oprah crowd or Ellen crowd or some late night crowd we you know get some applause in here uh, but we've done it we've broken down every single position made a ton of lists uh, ranked a ton of players um, from running backs to whatever the heck I, I think we did hope if I'm wrong I think we did running backs I hope we did running backs because now I'm starting to think we didn't but I think we did um, anyway that's it for free agency we did it we did it again offensive offensive of a defensive line are the most important and it, the it, it, when we review free agency inevitably when it's over I hope to God we at least get some of the players that we highlighted on these podcasts like again out of this out of the two markets that we, we we need the most offensive and defensive line the guys that i would want the most jake anthony shaquille barrett who's not going to be a dolphin because of, of, of the franchise tag bud dupree um who are some other names uh you know jaron reed uh dj reader uh i'm just naming names in no particular order uh, Chris Jones, Yannick Ngakwe, uh, Kyle Van Noy. Like, those are some big names. Those are really good players. That I hope, hopefully the Dolphins get one of those guys or three or four of those guys because those are some building blocks and some veterans you can really build a really good team with. All right, let's get into the fan Q&A, ladies and gentlemen, where we answer fans' questions. I accidentally forgot to upload this earlier and we'll probably I think we have eleven questions, which is a, is a modest number for this for this channel. Uh, this this first question comes from SM. SM says, if Tom Brady pushes Ryan Tannehill out of Tennessee, the Dolphins traded Rosen away. Would you consider bringing Tannehill back to start and groom a young quarterback? No. First of all, Tannehill at this point in his career is still in the prime of his career, competing for championships. Had one of the, had the fourth highest completion percentage in NFL history last year. He's he should probably start somewhere. <laughs> That's you know, and contend for championships. That you know, I think this team has got a chance to. Cr- I think it's either going to be this this team, depending on how the draft and free agency goes. If I had to say now, this could change because this, we could really kill it. Uh, but I would say per, for to me, what I think is going to happen, this team is either going to go eight and eight or nine and seven. In my opinion, now the I think. Could we go 10 and... Yes. I think this coaching staff... Hey, man. I wouldn't be surprised. You know, at one of the worst rosters in NFL history, and you can make an argument this the team could have won seven games, um, which is insane. So, uh, 
you know, you never really know what's going to happen. I don't even know what the heck I would... Oh, yeah, the whole Tannehill thing. So, I, not to say that, you know, Tannehill not to come here to compete for championships, but uh, I it would be dumb. First of all, Ryan Fitzpatrick is better than Tannehill. I know oh, it's true. He is. Um... And that's a fact. I mean, we saw it. We saw it. We saw it. That's all I got to say. I mean, what Fitzpatrick did with that team is it's special. Um, so, yeah, I mean, no, I think Fitzpatrick does the job better than Tannehill. And you already have one in house. So I'm going to say no to the, because of that, those reasons. The next question comes from SM. SM says, Skaggs, if the Dolphins' first free agency move is to pay uh, for a right tackle, does this automatically tip their hand that they are bringing in a left-handed quarterback, a.k.a. to attack a Tagovailoa? No, because this offensive line is hot trash. So, you know, and it has been for a long time. Other than 2016, is the one year we made the playoffs, and 2012's offensive line wasn't that bad either. Um, other than those two seasons, in recent history, it's been terrible. 2017's offensive line is underratedly bad. Um, it was, that offensive line was sad. Uh, in 20, 2018 and 2019's offensive lines were even that much worse, in my opinion. I mean, they were—they were all of those offensive lines were terrible. Um, so it doesn't tip their hat because of the the lack of talent at those positions. I think it would be a ama- again. It would be a huge middle finger to everybody who criticized the Tunsil trade if they were able to get two Pro Bowl caliber tackles in free agency. And somehow this offensive line is better than when what Laramie had in all of his years in Miami. That would be insane, dude. I would have to shake Chris Greer's hand for that. I'd be like, dang, man, that's pretty impressive. You, you, get, you kill all this dead money, and you, and you improve one of the mo- most important positions in the NFL, and you got a first-round pick out of it somehow? That, that, would, deserve a, that would deserve a round of applause. We'll see if he can do it. He's going to have some competition for those guys, but he has all the resources that he needs to get them. Um, so, no, I don't think it tits their hat. This next question comes from JFG. He says, Skaggs, would you like to trade for Panthers guard Trey Turner? I heard the Panthers are shopping him around. Absolutely. I love Trey Turner. He's a great player. Uh, this next question comes from Ethan. He says, hey, Skaggs, if Miami ends up drafting two running backs, who would you be most excited about? Okay, so, listen, I don't know why... Everybody's on this DeAndre Swift bandwagon. Uh, I like DeAndre Swift, but my top two running backs in this draft are J.K. Dobbins and Jonathan Taylor. And after Jonathan Taylor ran a four, what a four three or four four forty, that blew my mind because when I watched him play, he reminds me he's a power back number one and number two. He reminded me a lot of Mark Ingram, and so for him to be that athletic, um, and still play like that is very. It's Nick Chubbish, like. Um, like Nick Chubb has that same type of, uh, he he's he's a home run hitter and he's a power. He, he runs with power as well, and, ver- and he's very versatile in the way he plays. I think Jonathan Taylor has a, a sneaky sneakiness to him like that. So I think the two guys that excited me excite me the most are Jonathan Taylor and J.K. Dobbins. Insane production in college, you know, m- maybe not the same receiving threat that DeAndre Swift is. I hope I'm saying his name right or remembering his name right. Running back from Georgia, I know who he is. He might not. They not be that, that insane, um, especially Jonathan Taylor, who's coming from who comes from a super pro style run heavy, like put your head down in the dirt type of an offense. He might not be as versatile as those two, or even J.K. Dobbins, who I think it's good versatility to him. He, he, they might not be as versatile as he, DeAndre Swift, but I think they're better runners than he is, and especially for the NFL. So those those would be those would be my two guys. This next question comes from SM. SM says, any quarterbacks in the draft other than Tua, Burrow, Herbert, and Love you might consider? Jalen Hurts. I like Jalen Hurts. I, I've always liked him. Um, he, again, he does remind me a lot of Dak Prescott. Um, great playmaking ability. He didn't really show up in the Senior Bowl, though, which is weird. A little concerning. But great athlete, gr- great instincts. Pretty good thrower, not you know the greatest in the world, um, but I think he has some attributes that could he could be. I know people maybe see what was his name Eason or I can't remember his name. I think he's from um, uh, Washington something. I could be wrong about that. 
Who else? Jake, uh, Jake Fromm, obviously, is there. I like Jalen Hurts better than him. those guys. I think he has potential to be a better NFL quarterback than those two. A little bit of Vince Young in him. A little bit of Steve McNair in him. A little bit of Dak Prescott in him. He is in that kind of a vein of a of a of a of a quarterback, you know, um, strong, great athlete, uh, good instincts. Uh, let's see here. This next question comes from Douglas. Uh, Douglas says, "Hey Skags, I am dead set against giving away our draft capital to move up. I'd hate to uh, to see you play like a bunch of chumps." giving up multiple first-round picks to move up two or three spots. Let other teams get robbed and let us stand pat where we are and draft the best players that follow us. What do you think? No. I let, they're, they're too good, dude. They're, they're too good at the the most important position in, in, the, in the game. Listen, I'm not comparing these two to these players, but they are special players. When you have special players like a Joe Burrow to Tua Tagovailoa who are there, you have to get them. No matter what you have to give up, they're they're special player. I mean, again, I, I, it, it's worth it in my opinion. I understand what you're saying though. Uh, this next question comes from SM. He says, "Does Kalen Balaj make the 53?" No, depending. No, I don't think he makes the 53. This next question comes from Alpha. He says, "Do you? Ooh, does Kalen Balaj make the 53?" I just had a thought. The stuff that stopped me right in my tracks. We did switch to a spread offense, and Caleb Balaj is a he had well he was coming out of college a really good receiving back. Hmm. Maybe maybe Chan could turn his career around. I don't know. I think that would be his last hope. That the offense probably fits him better than the previous one. Uh, this next question comes from Alpha. Alpha says, "Do you think that we have to trade up to get Tua? And if so, should we stay at five and get the best player, or should we stay at five and get the best player available?" No. If 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 you if you know, and this, I mean, it's it is what it is. But uh, if you think someone is going to jump ahead of you, you have to trade up to get Tua. This next question comes from JFG. He says, "Skags, do you like to?" Uh, okay, then we answer this question. Uh, this next question comes from Mark. Mark asks, once again, quarterback question. What are your thoughts about Jordan Love? Personally, I feel all top four quarterbacks are are can't miss. However, imagine if you could swap Love and Herbert with Burrow and Tua. Teams would have the be- what which team would have the better seasons? Either way, in my opinion, we can't go wrong with any of those quarterbacks. What are your thoughts? I mean, I don't know. The the thing is, is I don't know with Burrow and I don't know Jordan Love. I feel like they have a lot of question marks. Um, what do you think about Tua and Joe? Really, the two things you hear about those two guys, which to me is a, is a bunch of nonsense, Joe Burrow's knock against him is he had a great team. Tua's knock against him is he had injuries, and he also had a great team. But they had such high level of production, and when you watch them play, it's special. That it's like, none of, it's okay. They, yeah, they're really good players, uh, and they had good players around them, and they made the most of it. So, um, you know, with the other, with the other, with Herbert, you cannot tell me if I bias aside, uh, you didn't know about you did not know about Tua, you didn't know about Joe Burrow, you didn't know about J- you didn't know about any of these players. If I put Jordan Love and Justin Herbert beside the other two, and I'm like, who's the best quarterback? Undeniably. Herbert and Love would have finished three or four. I, I, I don't think anybody would look at the other two and be like, you're worse than those two. I don't think it would happen. Uh, that, I, that's, I just don't think it would happen. So I don't think the other two are, are, are hit. Okay, so if he says, personally, I fall all top four quarterback. Uh, I feel that all top quarterbacks are can't miss. Imagine if you could swap Love and Herbert with Burrow and Tua, Burrow to his teams. Who would have the better season? Um, I think Joe Burrow is a special, special player. He's very intelligent. The way he talks about the game, he's a great leader. His teammates love him. The way his teammates talk about him, um, I don't think anyone could have done what he did. You got to think about what he did, dude. He took out all of, the teams that he beat to win the national championship. Their talent on their teams might not be as good as the LSU Tigers, but it's pretty dang good. We think about Alabama. And all of the great players that are on those te- that team, Clemson especially, with that defense and the, and the, and the, the talent that they have on the offensive side of the ball, like 
you know, I don't think Jordan Love and Justin Herbert could have done what he did. Uh, and, and, and Tua, I mean, who knows what would have happened if Tua could stayed healthy. The, this this so I, I'm gonna say it would have changed. I, I think I don't think the LSU Tigers would have won the national championship, and I don't think if we put Herbert or Love at, at Alabama, they they have all of the, the you know they shatter all of those the records that two are broke. Uh, this next question comes from SM. SM says Skags, you are the Finns GM. This is not one that has been discussed. Free agency is over. The draft is over. A team. At, that has a young quarterback is interested in Ryan Fitzpatrick. Will you listen to the call? What is his value in this scenario? I would only consider it. Man, the draft is already over. I would hang the phone up. I would hang the phone up. Yeah, no, I'm not, uh, no, I'm not. No, Ryan Fitzpatrick is gonna play the rest of the year. I wouldn't even consider it. If the draft is over, I'm not even considering it. This next question comes from Ethan Howard. He says, "Hey, Skags." Since it's unlikely that our front office actually wants to draft 14 players, where do you see us trading up in the draft? Would you trade back in, uh, into the back end of the first round? It makes sense. The 49ers are in need of more picks. Yeah, depending on who's there. Like, oh, top of the second round, J.K. Dobbins is going to get snatched or something like that. Like, we're not uh, – somehow those guys aren't you know lined up perfectly for us or someone in the, at the end of the first round is going to pick up one of those running backs. I would totally trade up. And back into the first round and, and pick one of those guys up because it is it is a very important important spot there. Uh, that is it for this episode, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you enjoyed. My throat is hurting. I would talk a little bit more, but uh, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna have to we're gonna have to cut it short here. Uh, we're not short. We won't. But pretty much an hour. Uh, so I'm Scott Extend eighty three, and I'll see you guys in next week's episode.